Welcome back. Now let's uh, invite, uh, let's welcome Kunal Shah, the Director of Analyst uh, from Indabus Ventures. Kunal, uh, good morning and welcome. First question, uh, let's talk about PS2 banks. What's happening there? What's the data telling you? Is there any sort of long trade, durable long trend amongst the PS2 banks? And if you're liking anything, because if I spot open interest addition, it's between almost uh, 4 to 15 percent across PS2 banks and we can name them Bank of India, Union Bank, Oriental Bank, IDW Bank across 4 to 15 percent addition on the long side, but is it looking credible enough? Uh, see overall talking about the bank nifty index, I think yes, uh, definitely for the bank nifty index now 31,300 remains a very crucial support on the downside. Uh, talking about the PSU sector, uh, yes definitely PSU are in a, a good phase and definitely even if I look at the long term charts of the PSU sectors, they have been continuing the patterns uh, of on the bullish side. So overall, yes, PSU sector is one thing I think which will which will likely to outperform the markets even going forward. Uh, even if I am talking about a one to two month horizon, I think PSU is the space where one should definitely be. Uh, it will act as the safety of heaven where we can see PSU is rallying aggressively on the upside. We can see 10 to 15 percent upside into the PSU sector overall. From that, from the space of PSU, uh, Can Bank at the current juncture looks very attractive. The stock has given a fresh breakout, and we can see some significant rally of 10% on the upside in the very near term. So I think Can Bank definitely remains a buy at the current juncture, uh, where the risk reward is also favorable. Uh, 264 is a support zone for the stock uh, till the time the stock stays above these levels. Expect uh, bounces towards the levels of 279, uh, towards the levels of 298, 300 kind of a zone. So overall, the uh, the trend for the stock definitely remains bullish. Uh, out of the all the PSU packs, Canbank looks uh, strong at the current juncture. Along with SBI, even SBI looks uh, attractive at the current levels. So from the PSU sector, these two are my top picks. But if you give me a preference, I think uh, Canbank would be my uh, preference at the current juncture uh, since the stock has given a fresh breakout and we can see some rally towards the levels of 299-300 kind of a zone. Well, Kunal, I, I asked you the banking picks here, but let me ask on a broader basis, uh, your top picks, if, uh, excluding again, if there is anything you have already talked about the banking pick, uh, your broader top picks for today. See, I think uh, definitely my first pick again would be from the PSU uh, bank sector. Uh, that is what the view is. Uh, we expect PSUs to outperform the market even going forward. So I think PSU looks very attractive. If not can bank, I think SBI is the next uh, thing which one can definitely pick up. Uh, the stock is now trading near to the high, uh, all time high levels. But yes, definitely the stock still remains in a buy mode. Uh, the stock near term support stands at 348, uh, 345 kind of a zone uh, till that zone is not breach we can see rallies towards the levels of 370 376 kind of levels so i think yes uh, psu banks are likely to be flavor and can bank and sbi are top picks from uh, those end uh, at the current juncture from the other pick uh, i think lnt still looks very attractive at the current level the stock on the monthly chart had given a fresh breakout and the stock is likely to see ahead uh, even higher towards the levels of 1700 1800 kind of level so i think whatever dip you get into lnt i think you should utilize uh, 1500 is now a very crucial support we have seen some put writing happening at a 1500 put strike. So I think there are uh, buyers and the put writers which are defending the 1500 uh, on the downside. So I think as long as 1500 is not taken out, one should utilize dips uh, uh, and uh, look for targets towards the levels of 1700 to 1800 on the upside. Okay, and time frame Kunal, what do you normally see as a time frame? Two months, three months, uh, like uh, uh, what do you think again LNT should be moving uh, within? Yeah, see, if I talk about LNT, I think keep a one month view. A uh, one month view, we can see some uh, rallies toward the levels of 1700 kind of a zone. And if I talk about PSU, I think that could be an immediate move within 15 to 20 days. So I think overall, within a span of one month, we can see uh, these rallies coming into these stocks. Then I can uh, very much say again, Kunal is saying again, LNT perhaps uh, could be the large cap stock of the June series. Again, strong move expected. From the counter here, let's talk about more stocks and what we are observing is tyre stocks are indeed getting momentum. Let's bring Seat on the screen and from there we go to Apollo tyres. What uh, we are looking Apollo tyres is again hitting 200 rupees after some time. There's good accumulation. Seat also is seeing a good open interest addition, almost 7% open interest addition happening. And recall on the underlying basis, you are seeing sharp fall in crude prices also that also is serving well. For the sector, auto sector as such has seen uh, some return of buying in the last two sessions. Kunal, a word on any auto stock if you like and second, 
uh, tire stocks if there is anything you like. Uh, see first I will start with the tyre sector, I think the sector has been an underperformer in the recent times. We have seen some selling pressure coming into the stock from uh, from the higher side. Uh, talking about SEAT uh, specifically from the sector, the stock is now trading at a very crucial uh, support zone. Uh, the stock support zone stands at 990, 980 kind of level. So I think the risk reward is definitely at the current levels on the buy, buy side. But I think that is just a trading move. Uh, we can expect levels of 1040 to 1050 on the upside on an immediate two to three day, days basis but I think overall now the structure still needs to be confirmed on a longer time frame uh, the 1050 now is a crucial resistance once the stock closes above those levels then we can see some kind of base formation happening uh, at the lower levels so I think a lot of confirmation is still needed from the entire even tire space uh, this is probably a move since all the tire stocks are trading at the support zone we can see some uh, pull, uh, some some pullback towards the levels of uh, 1050 uh, specifically talking about SEAT. So I think yes, the stock sector still needs much more confirmation at the current levels. I am not very hungo about it that yes, uh, you should buy a tire sector at the current levels. Probably a trading move which could be initiated for the next 2-3 to three, uh, trading sessions. Now uh, talking about the auto space, I think auto numbers for the month were definitely weak which are uh, reflecting in the price pattern. Bajaj Auto I think is one uh, which has come out with decent number and even on the chart front still uh, it looks uh, quite decent on the even in the long term charts. Uh, the stock now on the upside faces resistance at uh, 3160-3170 kind of a zone. So I think you can utilize dips again, uh, again to buy the stock towards the levels of 3150-3160 kind of a zone on the upside. So from the auto space at the current juncture Bajaj Auto looks attractive. The stock has uh, not seen much of a fall while the other auto sectors have seen some significant can fall. Uh, so we can see some uh, trading moves developing into the stock. Overall, the stock is still in a uh, sideways range. But for an uh, immediate basis, for a two to three sure. day perspective, you can buy the stock at the current levels. Okay, so that's the word coming from Kunal on uh, the markets and the stocks. Kunal, as always, thanks a lot for coming on the show and giving us insights on your stock picks and the market strategy. From the markets. Now let us move on uh, to political uh, news development where we understand the Prime Minister's office has done a feasibility on the Hinduja's offer for cash strapped jet airways. BTVI has learned that the London based Hinduja's are not keen to carry the debt burden of jet airways and are keen to pick up a debt free company. The Hinduja's also want investigations into alleged financial misappropriation of the airline's promoter Naresh Goel to end before taking a final call. In short, Hindujas have made it clear that it warns the airline at a low cost. But Jet's debt is over Rs 8400 crores and stuck in the middle are thousands of jobless employees. Shanu Gwarai now joins in with more details. Shanu, the question is, it looks like a long process, uh, especially the way Hindujas are laying some conditions. What are you hearing? Well, Piyush, unfortunately, what I'm hearing is exactly what I have mentioned. It is a sad story. I mean, the government is very keen that Jet finds a buyer. Government is also keen to help the company which comes forward to buy Jet. But where it is getting stuck is at the valuation level. Hindu Jaz even went to Abu Dhabi for a meeting with Eti Hard. Nothing came out of it. And now they have conveyed to the Prime Minister's office they're ready to acquired yet, but it should come minus all the frills. It should be a debt-free company, and all investigations into Naresh Goel and his family members must be completed before they can take over this airline, lock, stock, and barrel. Now, that's a time-consuming process. You could possibly even delay. The Hinduja plan to acquire, which was once, which was once in the finest airline. So, Let's see how fast the process goes. Piyush. Shanu, thanks a lot. And uh, we'll keep getting more details. Uh, BTV again has been keeping uh, our viewers updated on the Jet Airways news all the time. So that's uh, from Shanu. Now let, uh, let's move on to another news development where BTVI told you first, Oriental Bank of Commerce is rallying 7% in trade today. They're planning to consolidate two banks under them and have written to the finance ministry. We have Meghna Mittal now joining us in more details. Uh, Meghna, over to you. Yeah, that's right. So, we, do, we had told you earlier as well that the government is looking at the next round of bank consolidation. Now, what we have exclusively learned is 
that Oriental Bank of Commerce, it has written to the finance ministry uh, saying that it is ready for uh, the mergers. In fact, they have also suggested that two smaller banks, Indian Bank and Corporation Bank, can be merged with Oriental Bank of Commerce. So now the finance ministry has to take the final call. Also, in another update on the Oriental Bank of Commerce, uh, the board had already approved raising 3,000 crore via QIP. Now, what sources are confirming to us that about 2,000 crore they will be raising in this calendar year, depending on the market conditions, it could be likely in the third quarter. And the remaining 1,000 crore via QIP, they will be raising in the quarter four. Now, all this 3,000 crore will be through additional issue of shares. Now, this uh, fundraising is basically taking place so that the government stake can be reduced. Now, current OBC, current government stake in OBC is at 87.58%. That is well above the threshold that said the mandates of 75%. So, the bank is looking forward to pair the stake to 75% by March 2020. In order to do that, uh, the sources are saying that it is because of this reason. Though the government, though the OBC is not in need of much funds now in fact they are saying for next three years they do not need any recapitalization fund but just to pair the stake they are looking to uh, raise funds via qip so in these two major updates on the obc one that the bank consolidation might happen it has already suggested two names that it is open for and another that qip they uh, will be raising funds to pair the government stake to 75 percent by march 2020 well, another example of how BTV is making an impact for our viewers. Uh, Meghna, thanks a lot for bringing that news uh, for our viewers. Uh, but with that, uh, we reach uh, to the end of this edition of FNO Spotlight. Thank you so much for watching us. Uh, but stay tuned that after the break, we put the focus on small caps where greater the risk, greater is the reward. And today, we'll speak to the management of Shada Crop Cam and Responsive Industries. All of that on the Small Cap Show right after this break.